uh, are just a couple of get um, setter routines. So if I just paste these in, um, <clears throat> I know that we've got an array up here and I could just have a, an array passed in and use the normal setter routine that's created by doing a property on it. Um, what I'm actually gonna do is I've just created my own couple of simple methods here. Um, set color filter red, green, blue, and alpha it does exactly what you'd expect. It sets that um, array based on the values you have. And so that's then the color filter applied to this particular image or set alpha setting the transparency can be set on its own as well because alpha you may not want to have to go through setting the colors all the time you may want to just set alpha on its own to make something semi-transparent or transparent so i've added another setter routine there to do that so that really if we save that now that really gives us our header for our image um, we've defined our properties that are important to us we've gone and done the property assignment so that we can get our getters and setters as we require and we've also gone and initialized the headers for our methods inside here. So what we can do now is we can go into the actual um, M file of image and start to create the guts of what's going to go on inside the image side. So I'm going to highlight that. It's pretty empty at the moment. So we're going to start to fill this out with the code that we need. Now to start off with, we need to do our synthesizers. So we did all those properties on the previous page. So we need to actually synthesize now um, those properties on here. So I'm going to paste in the synthesize. You can see that these are just a, an exact copy of those items that we had um, before so that the getters and setters are set correctly. Um, and then what we need to do is we need to start dealing with those initialized methods. So if we go back here we had these initialize um, methods that we said we we're going to need to create. So we need to go through now and create the actual methods behind each of these. So the first one that I normally do um, is I normally have just a standard init, um, which is really just habit more than anything. Um, but what I do is I have a, a, an init method, which really just initializes this um, and sets all of the different properties with a default value so that the object in memory will function to some degree and shouldn't cause too many problems. Um, so if I just paste that in here, we can see it's just a standard init routine, um, which every object really should have. Um, and then I'm just defaulting in the values for each of the different properties that are important here. Okay, so because I haven't got an image or anything like that, I'm just literally saying that everything in here is going to be defaulted to some very simple value. Okay, so once we've done that, <clears throat> the first texture or the first uh, init that we had was uh, a texture. So if we look at the, the class which we're going to use for doing that, okay, okay, here's our init with texture. So we're taking in a texture 2D object. And inside the initialized routine, I'm actually going and setting the texture object inside or the texture property inside our image to reference text. So that is a pointer, okay? This isn't gonna be creating a copy of this texture. It will be referencing that texture. So if that external texture was ever removed or deleted, then this image would also fail to work as well because it's lost its reference to that. So you need to remember that when you're um, deallocating anything that you've created uh, and you've actually passed this into it because the texture is external to this image class. If it's removed, this image class is only referencing it and therefore there'll be a problem. Um, also, because I'm not actually taking a scale in here, I'm defining scale to be one. So it's going in with the same size as it is. Uh, and you'll notice that I'm calling a routine as well called um, init imp or init implementation um, and this is just a, a way of for all of the other things that need to be get set when you actually run an initialization rather than repeating them inside every single one of these convenience methods i have another method that gets called that sets all of those objects as well um, called init imp and we'll implement that in a moment so if i just carry on here uh, and move through so that's done our um, initialization using a texture and a scale so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to use the same thing, but this time I'm actually adding scale. And you'll see here that instead of setting scale to one, I'm actually setting scale to be whatever is passed in. So pretty straightforward stuff here. Um, I'm then going to start moving on and looking at the initializers with an image as well. So if I go in here, we can see that this time I'm taking a UI image as my input. And instead of texture just becoming a reference, I'm actually using Texture2D to create, to allocate a completely new instance of um, a Texture2D object, and that will become my texture. 
Um, and this is a bit safer than just using an external reference to a texture because it means when I remove that particular image and I delete that image, um, it's actually going to remove the texture that goes with it. So I can't accidentally deallocate the texture associated with this image because it's inside the class it's been defined. Um, so that makes it a little more stable from that point of view. It does obviously though mean that when you do destroy or delete uh, this particular image, then you have to have a dealloc and we'll deal with that at the end of this particular method. So you can see that, uh, and this is really what we covered in our first tutorial where we're actually creating a texture 2D, we're allocating to it and we're using init with image and the image we're using is the one that we've passed in. Okay, so this image here that we've passed in is the image which is being sent to texture 2D. Now, you'll also notice I've added actually an extra um, method statement on here as well called filter. So <clears throat> this is a change we'll have to go and make in a moment, but I've changed the Texture2D class to actually accept this filter argument as well. Um, and that allows us to do the filter changes that I was talking about earlier. So here I'm saying by default, I'm setting the filter to GL nearest, which will mean that everything is pixelated when you... Um, when you actually zoom up, so if it's larger. And also because I'm not defining the size inside the, uh, the method signature, I'm actually defaulting the size to one as well. Okay, but we'll go and make the changes to Texture2D in a moment for this so that we can cover off and see what it does. Okay, so we've uh, initialized with an image. Now we want to be able to initialize with an image and also a filter as well. Um, so if I pop in this one, you'll see it's exactly the same except this time I'm taking a value here, um, which is filter, and I'm passing that through to my texture2d allocation um, call as well. So the filter that I'm specifying is being passed through, really straightforward stuff. Scale is still being set to one because that's not something I'm actually passing in as an argument of my method. And finally, if I then go and get the next one this is now oh, sorry again this is now going to be identifying the fact that I can actually pass in an image with a scale okay so this time scale is being defined to the argument I'm passing in and I'm defaulting back again to nearest which means that the last one that really would be useful is for me to actually um, be able to pass in an image a scale and a filter all in one method call uh, which is what the next and last image uh, in it sorry is going to do Okay, so this time I'm actually passing in the scale and I'm passing in the filter and I'm using both of them um, inside, sorry, inside here. So there's my filter and there's my image scale. So that's our initialization done. So we can call those to actually initialize the image filter and we can probably create some other um, convenience methods later on. But these are just handy because they, they do let you, depending on your needs for the image, create everything you want in a single method call and not have to create it and then do some setting of uh, parameters afterwards. Now I mentioned, and as you can see in here, we've got this um, init implementation, which really means that outside of just setting this information, there's other info that needs to be set as well, um, like the uh, texture width, texture height, texture ratios, and all those sorts of good things. So that's classed and covered, well, sorry, that's not classed, that's covered underneath our uh, init implementation method. So if I now place that particular method inside our class as well, <clears throat> okay, we can see here that this is where I'm doing some of the calculations we talked about earlier. Um, so image which, image which, image width, sorry, is, uh, is actually our texture, and I'm using um, the texture, obviously this is coming from a texture2d object, so texture also gives us content size, and I'm getting the width of the content size. So inside 